uh, a few uh, months back and uh, uh, you know kind of with covid being there all the challenges but i think uh, there was that uh, you know first the blessings coming from xlri dr prem rajan dr pani uh, uh, father paul you know because xl was very keen to do something you know really at at the premium level uh, because uh, uh, you know kind of being the number one institute in asia for hr and then uh, you know kind of looking at uh, uh, how do we really come together and build this like a world class program so congratulations everybody all of you are like great people like rashmi said not everybody got a chance to come in and i think everybody is here so without much ado i think i hand it over to dr pani to open the the stage and then to dr prem rajan to walk us through and feel free to ask any question that you want uh, you know kind of um, uh, it's a very very diverse cohort a very very seasoned cohort dr pani uh, these are all very very senior uh, professionals uh, they are uh, you know they are very very excited to be part of it so over to you dr pani without much ado hi good evening to all of you i am uh, asis pani i am working in accelerate for last uh, 20 22 years and currently the dean of uh, academics uh, in xlri i welcome all the participants of course others have welcomed before for successful in the interview process and getting selected uh, to this uh, premium program uh, we have been listening about the program for uh, years because uh, professor prem is uh, involved in the design of this program and uh, all of you know about xlri that we started long back in 1949 and one of the program which is well known in asia is a human resource management program we don't speak about the program the alumni of this batch will speak about the program that's what uh, people who completed uh, the program from the institute uh, they are the chairs of uh, many organizations uh, now india and abroad the recently the the lean and i are uh, with a hr student uh, he became the ceo of the channel so that speaks again i'm speaking about uh, the alumni's performance we are good in the state because uh, we started this uh, technology based programs or we what we call uh, online program long back because many of the things in the Indian environment. We are the first institute which have started in two thousand one, two thousand two. We started this uh, online programs. So we are technically qualified, and our uh, professors are also qualified to conduct the classes. Their learnings from the last twenty years that uh, will make this program effective. So we, uh, the institute, is uh, a category one institute by AICT. so what do you mean by category 1 institutes that uh, we can start uh, there are many flexibilities given to the institute so we can start new programs in this new program offerings one of this that uh, the program which uh, all of you have joined and few other programs are also in the pipeline so in between some of the people may be confused that uh, why xlr is delaying it we are delaying in the process uh, two things what uh, has uh, hindered the process of uh, starting this program a little early <coughs> is uh, covid that's what uh, covid uh, all of you know that uh, how it created havoc in the country and second thing is that as because we are category 1 institute we have to inform aict about this uh, post graduate diploma program so the program which will update in the aict portal that usually Uh, happen in february so we got little delayed so that's what uh, no uh, hesitations to be transparent with all of you um, coming to professor prem rajan he um, is a consultant to many of these uh, organizations uh, and his uh, program very popular program popular course in the institute is that competence based mapping which many of the corporates have well his uh, expertise in this and um, i know Uh, last one year, he has uh, involved in the process of designing. 
it's not only the faculty from XLRI, also faculty from outside will give exposure to how the things work outside the country. So all of you who participate in this program will get a bigger exposure to, 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 to the HR related issues. So I will stop here and uh, wish you all, all of you a best time with XLRI. And I now hand over to Professor Prem Rajan to speak about uh, the design of the program. So thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Pani, uh, for uh, taking time uh, to interact with the participants and uh, uh, much appreciated uh, as Dean of uh, XLRI. Professor is also a professor in the information systems area. Uh, he has been uh, guiding the various uh, programs that Excel has been offering uh, introduction of new programs for the last uh, six years in his capacity as Dean. So thank you so much uh, for uh, taking time out once again. And uh, we hope uh, we will have your continued support and guidance in terms of making this first program uh, first batch, uh, highly successful one. Uh, so Professor Pani may leave as he has some other commitments. So uh, thank you once again. Thank you, uh, Professor Pani. Thank you so much. Uh, so um, welcome all of you. Uh, everyone uh, we would have met as uh, part of the interview process. So uh, uh, there is nothing to introduce uh, uh, about uh, one another because we all know the profile of the participants. Now, what we are here for, uh, because we have started this program or the process almost six months ago. So it's important that uh, you develop clarity in terms of what is in store for you. Fine, there have been some changes as uh, you would have been updated about as most of you are aware about. When we started, we started it as an 18 month program. Fine, at that point in time, uh, we were not really keen on the AICTE tag. Fine, uh, so then uh, there was uh, this uh, suggestion that we could, anyway, we are having an 18 month program. If we have certain projects, certain uh, other ancillary activities, we might as well uh, you know, uh, be able to get an AICT accreditation, fine. So uh, we are in the process of uh, making this as an AICT recognized program. But as of today, it is not an AICT program. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, convey something which is not uh, uh, true. So being transparent, I think that's very important. So, but we are hopeful that uh, this program will be AICT recognized. Uh, so in that sense, uh, uh, technically the program's uh, duration has increased from the 18 month with which we started to uh, 22 months or 23 months. But it is not that the sessions, that the interactive live sessions would go on beyond the uh, 17 months or 18 months. That would remain as it is, but you will have a couple of ancillary uh, assignments, dissertation, etc., so that we can manage uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, hours that is required. So it is in that context that I am trying to uh, uh, trying to uh, sort of share with you uh, what is in store for us in this program. Uh, at any point in time, if you want to uh, have any questions, even while I am uh, discussing about the program curriculum or the program schedule, feel free to uh, sort of uh, uh, raise your hand and ask questions. Otherwise, you can also send uh, messages through chat. So let me try and share this. So as they say, uh, you know, uh, begin by keeping the end in mind. So this is what's going to happen after two years. So uh, uh, this program, is, uh, uh, as we know, it is meant for CHROs in the making. And uh, this is uh, uh, sort of uh, 
what should I say, position as the first postgraduate diploma program in HR in uh, Asia. Now, if you look at the broad structure of the program, what we are having is 16 to 17 months of live sessions. And uh, remaining time, uh, as I said, to uh, conform to the requirement, we will have five to six months of project uh, dissertation work, et cetera. Primarily, there would be four terms of four months each. And uh, we, as we have uh, informed you, the, the revised one, uh, by end of Feb, we will have our orientation session and the session will commence on 20th of March. So that is the broad uh, uh, structure. Now, in terms of session details, I'm sure most of you may be eager to understand uh, what is, uh, uh, when is the session schedule, et cetera. How many contact sessions in a week? We will have two sessions in a week. Now, what we have decided is this would be Fridays and Sundays. But we would also keep Saturday as a backup. It's not that we will use Saturdays to take sessions, but in extreme cases, fine. Uh, in exceptional cases, maybe we might use a Saturday to uh, make up for the loss, etc. But if we are doing that, that information would be available with you at the beginning of a term. That is, if it is a four-month term, at the beginning of that term, we might say that instead of this Sunday or this Friday, we will have this Saturday. So that information will be shared with you. Then each day, we, our contact would be for four hours. And that four hours would be split into two sessions of two hours each. Of course, there would be a break in between. And um, each day, there would be two different courses. If session one is uh, dealing with a particular course, session two of that day will uh, deal with another course so that we don't have the monotony of having to sit through four hours of uh, same uh, professor, same topic, etc., etc. So therefore, that is what we have uh, uh, decided in terms of the design. Now, this would be the timing on Fridays and Sundays. We have 6.30 p.m. to 7.30, the first course, and 7.30 to um, uh, 8.25. Uh, uh, sorry, I think uh, uh, this is 6.30 to 8.25 is the first course. Then we have a 15 minutes break. Then 8.40 to 10.30 is the second course. Fine, uh, I think there's a slight mistake there. So as I said, two courses would run parallelly at any given point in time. So first two hours would be spent on course number one. Next two hours after break of 15 minutes will be spent on course number two. Now you would also be, because it's important for us to plan and you uh, being senior professionals, it would be very important for you to get an idea about when is uh, uh, each term starting, ending, etc. So this is the schedule. Fine. Our uh, session start on 20th March and ends by first term, ends by 30th July, uh, so on and so forth, as you can see. Uh, once we are done with the first year, there will be a one month break, fine. So maybe you would also be able to plan your activities for that uh, month. And then we continue with term four, which uh, again would be a live session term and the concluding term, which would be term five, which would essentially have other as I said, ancillary uh, activities such as project dissertation, et cetera. So that is the way these five terms are uh, scheduled. Now, the, we, we, you would also remember that we have announced uh, campus visit. Now, this campus visits uh, uh, would be primarily at NCR, uh, at XLRI campus. But I, I think it's also important that you all, you all have a taste of XLRA Jamshedpur campus, uh, in a sense, the mother campus. So maybe one such uh, visit could be organized in Jamshedpur. But otherwise, this would be the, uh, you know, the schedule for three visits. Fine. 25th July, the first visit, 6th Feb, the second one, and 25th September, 23, the third and final visit. Maybe the third and final could be at uh, Jamshedpur. So that's about the schedule. Uh, in case you have any questions on the schedule, uh, you could uh, sort of uh, raise your hand. Otherwise, I will carry on with the curriculum. 
uh, broad overview of the curriculum and then probably we can take questions at the end of it. Sir, I believe that these timings are in the evening, right? 6.30 to 10.30? That's 10. right. That's right. right. 6.30 to 10.30. Thank you. So the Sunday time is also in the evening? Yeah, yeah. Unless, uh, so if, if there is uh, uh, a general uh, view that Sunday could be uh, during, uh, you know, uh, the daytime, uh, we could explore that. Fine. So we will not discuss that right now, but we can certainly explore that. Okay, so uh, we are looking at 36 courses, fine, across these four terms. And on an average, each course would take about 20 hours of uh, interaction, fine. But a few courses could be of shorter duration of 15 hours, and a few courses correspondingly would be of a little longer duration of 25 hours. And besides that, as I said, we will have uh, uh, dissertation projects and a few asynchronous modules, fine, where uh, video-based recorded sessions would be made available to you. And of course, mentoring and career services, et cetera, that have been already communicated to you. So that would also form part of this ancillary uh, aspects. Now, uh, in terms of the delivery, uh, Predominantly XLRI faculty from different areas of expertise, not only from hum, uh, human resource management and organizational behavior, but certainly from other areas like strategy, marketing, operations, finance, etc., would also uh, join us to deliver the courses. But what we are also uh, uh, made sure is about a third of the courses uh, will be taught by uh, faculty from international B schools. Uh, a few have uh, already been on board and a few more we are in touch with them. And each course and or most of the courses will have an industry uh, practitioner uh, sharing uh, the experience to augment the learning. So if uh, let's say that 80% of the course is taught by uh, a professor, probably 20% could be uh, handled by uh, an, a practitioner with that rich uh, uh, experience sharing session. So that is uh, in terms of the uh, delivery. And uh, if you recall uh, this program architecture, you must be aware. And this is how we have uh, designed, as we keep saying that, uh, uh, you know, originated from the academic research, uh, enriched and validated by CXOs and CEOs respectively. So that is the genesis of this uh, program architecture. And uh, while HR is a key aspect of this entire uh, program, you would also appreciate a great uh, amount of emphasis is being provided to understanding or leading the external environment, leading the business or understanding uh, the changing nature of work, the future of work and workplace, as well as uh, unique responsibility that a CHRO would be uh, sort of uh, charged with in terms of uh, uh, corporate governance, board management, et cetera, et cetera. And during all this time, one cannot um, uh, forget uh, to sort of uh, place the individual at the center uh, of the whole thing and therefore uh, understanding and developing self uh, capabilities would certainly be a theme that is running throughout uh, the course of this program. So that is the broad architecture. Uh, and based on that, we have sort of translated uh, this in terms of uh, various uh, courses, as I said, 36 courses. Now, I'm just quickly going through uh, certain uh, courses that would be uh, there as part of the program. Uh, these are courses from the strategy area. Fine, so you can see macroeconomics and global economic environment, strategic thinking uh, in terms of both principles as well as practices, uh, international business, innovation and design thinking, uh, managing organizational resources and capabilities, taking the perspective of resource-based strategy, applying strategic thinking through simulation, management of emerging enterprises, and finally sustainability and public policy. These are the kind of courses that uh, would uh, of course, it doesn't matter much whether 
this exactly fall under strategy discipline or HR discipline. But uh, for just for convenience, I have categorized based on the uh, disciplines. Fine. Uh, so it's not that we complete the strategy focus first and then move on to uh, another uh, sort of a discipline. Uh, they, many of these courses might uh, run uh, concurrently, etc. So those are essentially with a strategic uh, perspective. Then we have, of course, human resource management and organizational behavioral uh, uh, disciplines uh, joining together to offer courses like future of work and workplace, uh, strategic management of human assets, people analytics, employment relations, industry relations, performance management, uh, HRP, total rewards, uh, IHR or international human resource management, uh, talent acquisition, and of course, um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as uh, uh, developing talent. So these are primarily with an HR focus and uh, similarly with an organizational behavior focus of understanding human behavior and emotions, foundations of teamwork and leadership, organizational change, uh, structuring the organization to meet with uh, uncertain environment, uh, leadership influence and power, and we also have Indian philosophy and leadership excellence, mentoring, coaching, and counseling. So those are the two buckets of courses which cover human source management and uh, HR, uh, sorry, uh, organizational behavior areas. Then from a general management perspective, we have corporate governance, executive compensation, and the board. Social, it's, it's also important for us to appreciate uh, uh, you know, the, the research orientation, not to make you a doctoral candidates or something, but that curiosity and validating or evidence-based management. So to that uh, extent, social research methods will also be focused, managerial ethics and strategic communication. And from finance area, accounting for management, corporate finance and capital markets would be uh, dealt with marketing, information technology, and operations, digital transformation from IT, business marketing strategy from marketing and operation strategy from operation. So this would all make it uh, uh, the, to add up to a total of 36 that I was uh, uh, talking about. So that is the, the broad uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, details about the scheduling and the nature of courses or the program uh, curriculum. Uh, besides that, as I talked about asynchronous learning uh, in terms of uh, recorded sessions, video sessions, uh, dissertation, there would be action research, which you could undertake in your respective organization. That's the beauty of it in terms of uh, having uh, spent time in terms of uh, understanding. It's not that you are not aware of HR, et cetera, but in terms of this new perspective, how to translate that in terms of undertaking actual action research in your own respective organization or even elsewhere. So we will have two such action research projects. Of course, mentoring commences from term one onwards, that would be their career services. And finally, a capstone project, taking uh, together all the learnings, fine, so that you have um, uh, so gathered, accumulated over the course of this uh, uh, four terms. In the fifth term, you could also undertake a capstone project, which would be broadly an interdisciplinary thing in nature. Fine. Uh, you would have, of course, uh, faculty members guiding you, supporting you. Uh, perhaps it could also uh, be possible for you to uh, co opt someone from your own organization. This is particularly relevant for the action research component that we are talking about. So that's what is going to happen predominantly in the final uh, term. I think with that, uh, uh, the information that I plan to share that is done. So now we await uh, your questions, your clarifications, and your thoughts. Yeah, hi, Prem Rajneesh here. Hi. Yeah, so Prem, uh, the classes uh, will start on a Friday, 6.30. 20th. Yeah, so that is slight problem because Friday is a weekend and a lot of work, you know, gets, you know, winded up. So by 6.30 starting the classes and, you know, attending it, absolutely, there's no way on a weekday, you know, starting it at 6.30. I don't know about others, but 
for me it is absolutely no i thought it's on saturday and sunday because friday is a you know quite a hectic weekend in the office you know taking all the reports from each and every department you know that's where you spend more time in the evening so i had no idea all right that. so we no we will keep that in mind but our thought yeah, is yeah. that if you don't it's have a break if you don't have a break in between if you have sessions two consecutive days that would leave you with very little time in terms of uh, you know uh, at least going through some of these things because there could be case studies case based discussions etc and if especially so if you are going to uh, make the sunday session uh, during the day time then that would literally leave you with very little time because if uh, saturday session if you are uh, closing by 10 10:30 Uh, and uh, a sunday session if you start in the morning or even in the afternoon it leaves you with very little time uh, we are not uh, 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 we are not uh, you know uh, hell bent on ensuring that the sessions are held on friday itself fine but this is the uh, this is the consideration that we had while thinking of uh, uh, a friday and sunday uh, we also have uh, some people from the Uh, outside of the country i uh, particularly in the middle east uh, they also felt uh, uh, as friday would be uh, helpful uh, but we essentially we looked at it in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, ensuring there is a kind of a gap between the two days i think that was the primary uh, consideration yeah deepan you have a question uh professor two things one uh, of course uh, i'm on the same page uh, on in terms of having it on a friday and then breaking it up for a sunday because having a gap is absolutely essential one second uh, what is the criteria in terms of attendance or uh, i do understand you know we need to be fully committed but let's say for some work priority or for some other reason one is not able to attend it or make it how will attendance pan out uh, in terms of what is a loss or how uh, so maybe you know recording accessibility and all of those elements if you could share your thoughts yeah. that will be easier yes uh, while recording you will be able to access we would also expect uh, a minimum attendance of about 80% uh, but uh, for genuine reasons if you miss a session uh, you would be able to access the uh, recorded session but that is more like an uh, exception but 80% attendance would be what we expect so okay. how about this uh, friday if you uh, uh, I, i don't remember who uh, rajneesh uh, just uh, uh, just to understand so if we delay the uh, commencement uh, instead of 6:30 if we make it 7 would it be any better yes absolutely because yeah. uh, the offices you know Uh, you know get over by 7 you know you you know wind up yeah. by 7:15 sure sure i know we, we see everyone's uh, constraint this important to us uh, but we will also have to uh, get uh, the uh, the opinion from everyone and then we will take a call but this break in between two sessions would be important so that is so professor yeah. pemrajan there is a lot of people who are also putting on the chat so there is a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, okay so i was just looking for people are actually saying that you know friday and sunday really works but okay. yes i think so, we all need to do it together i think it's a class yeah. i think so, uh, it's not yeah. that even if one person has a genuine yeah. uh, yeah. constraint we will yeah. listen to that i think that's yeah. important that's absolutely important. absolutely yeah. so uh, uh, then we have smita who has put in a yeah, add it to the spotlight um good evening sir and thank you for uh, sharing uh, those details it just helps us um uh, my question is uh, basically uh, we sure that there are going to be exams at every uh, semester could you throw some light on how this is how this is going to work for us uh, yes so we uh, uh, see this uh, what we look at is continuous assessment fine Uh, which you would all have experienced in your, uh, uh, you know, academic experience. So th this would mean uh, there could be, uh, you know, some kind of uh, uh, in-class test, fine, of shorter duration, uh, etc. Uh, you may have a project, a small assignment, or a case presentation that could vary from course to course. 
fine. Depending on the nature of course, uh, or some courses, you may not have a case-based discussion at all. It may be more experiential, fine. So you can't use the standard format of assessment to evaluate a student uh, in that uh, highly experiential based uh, exercise. Um, uh, but you will have a final uh, uh, sort of exam, uh, which uh, we don't want to keep an exam week, uh, something of that sort, but we would uh, have at the end of, let's say that uh, uh, two or three courses, we will have end term for those two or three courses. Besides those, uh, 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 you know, uh, in class uh, uh, sort of uh, test as well as assignment. So that would primarily be the method of assessment. And of course, uh, as I said, there could be case presentation, which could be evaluated. And many of these things could also be group based uh, activities. Uh, but this uh, uh, final exam would be an individual uh, kind of an uh, evaluation. Yes. And Thank you, Smita. Yeah. Prashant, can you uh, uh, speak out your uh, question? Because like, I can't add you on Spotlight because you're not on video. No, not a problem. I think I'm just yeah. opening up. So yes. good evening, Professor Primaraj. Good evening. Thank you Prashant. very much. <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, Professor, I just wanted to ask you one question regarding, you know, the especially on the mentorship part of it. Yes. Uh, you know, we had that also as part of the program curriculum. So, you know, just to understand that, you know, how that allotment would happen. And also, yeah, also so what I can suggest yeah. is, uh, if uh, I think either Rashmi or Rahul in the beginning has mentioned, uh, toward the end of it, there would be some exclusive time that is spent on mentoring topic, right, oh. Rashmi? Yes. yes. Yeah, so probably uh, it could be taken up uh, there okay. Fine. Uh, toward Thank the you. end of the session. Thank you. Thank you. So Vishwas... Professor, I actually didn't have any question, but two requests. Uh, uh, sure. One, one is if you can, if anyone can send this document to us, the whole content and the uh, and the schedule piece, uh, which you just yeah. showed us. What was presented? Yeah, presented. That sure. Sure. Second request was on on the Sunday schedule, considering that uh, it's it's late in the evening and Monday's <laughs> morning would be uh, hectic for all of us. If you can move ahead by a couple of hours on Sunday, that would be really helpful. That's again a sure. request. Yeah. Uh, and the third thing is uh, uh, we are about two months uh, uh, away from the start of it. If we can uh, get more specifics into uh, into the into the program, uh, logistics and, and other other stuffs, so that that would, that's the third request I had. Okay. And the fourth one is 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 more on a question. Uh, where do we do we also get some reading content uh, uh, which which is textbooks notes or anything on on, on the topics which are yeah so this in terms of the material uh, reading material certain courses may have uh, textbook certain courses may have uh, you know articles fine uh, so it varies from course to course some of the courses may not have a proper textbook but if there is a proper textbook, textbook would be uh, prescribed and made available to you as part of the reading material. Otherwise, uh, case studies or other reading materials uh, would be made available. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next question from Tamasa. I'm adding you to the spotlight. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Hi, How, are you? good. How are you? I'm good too, sir. Uh, yeah. A few questions yeah. I have, and I sorry, I have a toddler around, so he will be speaking in between. Um, one is, uh, you know, we are when we are expected to be in uh, the campus, um, do we need to apply for leaves? I mean, I just wanted to understand if we are going to be engaged all through the day when we are in campus, because I understand that's about a few days. Uh, that's my first question. Second question is uh, about the alumni status. Uh, would we be under executive uh, education or would we be under the regular uh, status uh, you know, for, for alumni? Um, third question I have is, um, you know, do we have any visibility around uh, the, the speakers from industry? Um, you know, if, if, if you can just uh, throw some light there. Okay, so first thing, uh, you, you know, there are three visits of six days each, which means one whole week will have to be committed to that. And it would be hectic. Once you are on campus, we might as well uh, make the best use of it. So you would be free to buy there for that six days. So it would be essentially Monday to Saturday. 
fine. So those three visits, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, one is uh, in July, the next one is in Feb, and the last one is in uh, September or October. So that you'll have to uh, exclusively earmark for uh, this program. So that is uh, one. So your uh, second question was uh, the, about the practitioners. Yeah, so uh, what are that question? So as I said earlier, every course will have a practitioner component. Every means almost all the courses. I'm not saying that uh, every single course, uh, but there would be a practitioner perspective in most of the courses. So a professor might teach 80% uh, uh, of the course, but a practitioner would give his or her perspective uh, as also part of the same course. Is that what your question? So, uh, no, the visibility around uh, the practitioner or the industry speaker, uh, yeah. primarily, who, who all are you bringing in uh, to talk to us? If you yeah. have any... So Yes. So I think uh, 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 lead up would have shared with you this 100 uh, CXO club, fine. So I think if they have not shared that uh, information will be shared also uh, today. Uh, I think it is also in their website, uh, the members of the CXO club. So essentially these are CHROs and a few CEOs, etc. So they would be, uh, it would be from that pool. Uh, some of them would be volunteering for mentoring services, some of them for sessions, etc. Fine. So that is the way. And I think the exact uh, uh, details would be uh, provided by the lead up team. Fine. But definitely these are all reputed, established people. Uh, there is no second opinion on that. Yeah. So can I come in here just oh, maybe uh, for 30 seconds and see yeah. first question. Tamsa, so for example, uh, we should have... Uh, uh, Mr. Dwarkanath, uh, who has been, uh, you know, kind of the, he's been part of the board of Max. He's also was the GlaxoSmithKline CHRO, one of the, one of the best HR professionals the country has produced. He would come and take sessions around how do you manage the board? How do you manage corporate governance? So there are these people who have interest in certain areas, which is, you know, kind of which they would want to do. And then Dr. Prem Rajan is going to consolidate all these pieces around the courses. Uh, for example, there could be somebody who's really done m &As very well. And when the topics of m &As are going to get talked about, I think the practitioners who's done the maximum number of mergers and acquisitions and the complexities in managing the integration, you know, you really get somebody to do that. Similarly, some CEOs coming and talking about their business context in terms of how the business models are changing, what is the new demands from the HR leaders, et cetera all those pieces coming in. So I think that integration, while the list is there, the integration in terms of, while Dr. Prem Rajan is going to choose who is going to be actually the best person, you know, along with the prof playing that role. Uh, so that is just giving you a few examples from there. Of course, Rashmi can show you the list of the CXOs who are showing interest to come and teach, mentor, et cetera, post this session finishing, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the session, I'll show you the list of all the CXOs that who have agreed to be part of the mentoring pool as well as the facilitation pool. All right. So uh, thank you. And the last question was alumni status. Yeah. Alumni status. Uh, it is uh, full alumni status. Okay. Uh, because I don't think we have uh, executive alumni kind of for this thing. Uh, that is for the certification program. This being uh, a diploma program, we will have full alumni status. Okay, so uh, can I move on to, um, yeah, Varun Reddy? Yeah, hi. Uh, so, okay, w one of my questions was already answered. answered. I was wanting yes. to ask about the alumni status. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the second thing I wanted to answer, during the three campus visits, uh, what is a broad-based agenda for those five, six days? And hmm. the second thing in that itself, I see two of the campus visits are scheduled to daft in the month and time. Can they be pushed sometime to the middle of the month? It would be very helpful. Uh, because in my current role, I think many of the people during month and, you know, things get rushed up in reportings and all that. So if they are put at least one week before that, that would be very helpful for us. But I just want to understand okay. yes, what's the broad base, the work and all, you know, what exactly we'll be doing for the six days, either in CR or in Jamshed. We will have uh, a couple of things. One is the course schedule will carry on, but more importantly, it would be uh, building that uh, team, fine. So this group of people are coming together. So that is 
uh, uh, another important thing. Third is there could also be uh, uh, you know uh, experiential sessions which are uh, uh, sort of introduced. There would be other professors, like for instance, both the campuses. We will have professors who may not be directly involved in this, but who would uh, want to interact with the participants. Fine. So uh, essentially, it is to uh, I would look at it as building the team uh, of this uh, group, and uh, you will have also during this time uh, some of the CXOs who would be uh, interacting with you. Fine. So there would be sessions with them. So these are some of the activities, but your, your course schedule will continue uh, during that uh, period as well. So some of these courses uh, might require, as opposed to an online kind of a delivery, might require an offline kind of delivery. So that would also happen during that time. So there are multiple objectives. So the schedule will be sent to us in advance, right? For the, yeah, yeah, uh, of course. We, we, will, we will, in the next couple of weeks, we will freeze the schedule and then uh, sort of uh, send it across to you. Then if at all there is something which is beyond our control, then uh, you, we may have to sort of modify, but otherwise we would try and stick to the schedule. Sure, thank you. Uh, but this was yeah. sincere request, if it's possible not to keep in the month end, it would End be of very the month, yeah. okay, all right. Uh, even okay. one week before that, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. Please, sir. Yeah. Thank just you. to add in sir, also Varun, I mean, getting, uh, doing a session uh, you know, also in a physical session in, on the campus will also help in networking, which is again a very big part of this entire, uh, uh, you know, two-year journey. So, you know, so that also, you know, sort of helps not just meeting with the professors, but also meeting with the industry people and also meeting all of you meeting as peers. One another. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. will also cement the relationships for years to come. That's the team that is being built. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, your question. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, hi. Hello, sir. Uh, actually, hi. my question was, uh, uh, you know, I agree with Rajneesh uh, that, you know, Friday uh, 6.30 is going to be a little difficult for me as well. Uh, if you can push the timings, that would help us. Like 7 or after 7, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, that was one. Sure. Um, and I had two more questions. Uh, one is related to the assignments. Uh, are there going to be uh, group assignments or uh, that is one and the second one, are you planning for any assessment, individual assessments? Uh, yes. So as there are two things. One is, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the process would be continuous assessment. So um, uh, if there is an assignment, whether it is individual assignment or group assignment that will uh, be sort of evaluated. Okay. Fine. Oh, so some, okay, yeah. sure. On the competency part, on the competency assessment, generally, uh, you know, that is uh, uh, generally done. Are we planning for anything like that? No, no you mean to say that uh, the individual competency not related to the course objective? Uh, related to the course objective, but... Uh, hmm. Generally, you would find uh, there would be a gap between individual and the, the target that we are trying to plan. Hmm. So definitely, uh, there will be a lot of gaps in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, the competencies. Yes, hmm. uh, and you have selected people on the basis of potential. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, there will be definitely gaps, you know, which may not be aware or are you planning for something like that? I mean, I was... Uh, I was uh, can I come in here? Great. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dheeraj, I mean, you know, we'll be addressing this, you know, individual, uh, you know, we'll be having individual goal settings uh, for our mentoring sessions. And, you know, so everybody has their own personalized goals, which are there, which we will be addressing it there. So uh, one, of course, is the class learning, which will happen uh, with the university, with the college. Mm -hmm. And of course, your specialized, your own, you know, whatever is your gaps that you would want to fill, I think that would happen uh, on the one-on-one -on -one session with the CX or mentor that will be assigned to you. I hope okay. that answers the question. Yeah. And one last question on, uh, is on the scholarship. If you can just uh, explain about that. Yes. As this scholarship idea, uh, again, I think uh, Rahul might answer, but we were looking at the scholarship originally because of uh, to support students in terms of the high perceived high uh, fee. Fine. So now we, then we felt that most of the students were looking for support like that. So that is when we took a, a you know, review and decided to scale down on the fee. 
Okay. Fine. So after that, we have not really uh, seriously given the scholarship a thought. So that is uh, my uh, response to that. Maybe Rahul at a later stage might have something more to add to that. Because we started with that, uh, you know, uh, 22 lakh uh, kind of other things and we reviewed and uh, scaled down the fee. Uh, because at that point in time to support uh, maximum students, we were planning uh, scholarship as a support mechanism. So now uh, uh, we haven't, since we decided to revise the fee uh, amount. So after that, we haven't really uh, given it uh, much uh, thought. Now, I if can, it is I, there, it will be more like I can a add there, sir. Yeah, I yeah. can add there, sir. So I think that was the call here that the board also took within Excel that because of the feedback that came from the market, this fee change happened, which Excel very kindly, you know, agreed and it was COVID time also. But I think with the kind of the whole uh, uh, architecture of the program and the kind of people coming in, I think, uh, let's be very clear, I don't think we will be, uh, you know, having any more fee changes. Let me be very upfront here so that, you know, we're not having any wrong expectations being set. Hmm? Thank you, uh, Dheeraj. Uh, Anita, your question, please. Hi, sir. Uh, Hi. I have a question around uh, program curriculum. Uh, you mentioned this about 36 set of courses. So is it a standard curriculum or because there's some programs which also allows, uh, you know, options of pick and choose maybe one or two or is, or is it a standard one for everyone? This is treated as a compulsory because we are having uh, you know, about uh, uh, 35 to 40 uh, students in class. So if we uh, further uh, allow elective kind of a scenario, we may not have adequate subscription to different uh, courses. So then you will have still complications regarding uh, scheduling the pro uh, courses, et cetera. Fine. So, so those challenges, keeping those challenges in mind, we have decided to make all these courses as compulsory elective in that sense. In the sense that there is no choice uh, 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 available. Sure. And the second one is around access to faculty uh, during yeah. the course. Uh, yeah. uh, will it uh, be sort of, uh, uh, for example, we can reach out to faculty as and when, or do we have a standard timeline for that? Yeah. So I think that is uh, uh, to do with uh, the individual faculty. Uh, sometimes some of them may be comfortable that you can access them at any point in time. Some of them might uh, give you a specific timeline where they could be contacted, etc. So that oh. would vary from uh, individual Thank faculty. You. To okay, yeah. sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sandeep, your question, please. Thank you, for, Professor, for having this uh, session. I think uh, from last uh, few months, we are hearing a lot about this program and waiting for the program to be started. Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, we heard a lot about Excel and Exam Sherpur, and as uh, Dean also mentioned about uh, Lena Nair and being the extended family member and, and also spent a lot of time in the HR or organizations. So the word Jamshedpur campus is, is something that we are very possessive with. And now if you will see the completion certificate that you put it as a sample on the website, though Jamshedpur is hosting this program, right? And we are saying that is the mother uh, organization that is organizing this program. However, that word is completely missing in the completion certificate. So this is not a concern. This is just a possessiveness about the brand altogether. Not sure whether that is under the considerations or that is the final one. So thought to share it with you. Okay, so you're saying uh, XLRI Jamshedpur is missing? Yep, Jamshedpur is missing. XLRI is there. Logo okay, is there. so we, we, I'll look, look at it. I, I, I look at it and uh, uh, whatever is uh, needed, we will uh, yep. do it. Yeah, because you, even the certificate program, right, for the few months online, they are having the hosted by XLRI Jamshedpur and all. So yeah. just it. So that together. must be an oversight. Uh, other, otherwise, yeah. Yes. I think you already got a compliment from someone. 
Thank you so much. Thanks. Sir. Thank you. Thank sir, you. there is this uh, uh, your brand which has both the XLRI and the Charger Campus thing together. I think we should be using that. Uh, I mean, of course, it's the yeah. XLRI prerogative to give the certificate. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, the program is uh, an XLRI Jamshedpur, but it's for the convenience of uh, students that we are keeping the uh, visit, you know, uh, offline courses at Delhi because Delhi, it is easier to uh, reach access, et cetera. So that is, otherwise we would love to host you all at Jamshedpur campus. Yeah. Thank you, Sadeep. Thank you. Gautam, over to you. Yeah, hi. Good evening, Professor. Hi. Good evening. Uh, good to see you and uh, it was much awaited because uh, we wanted to know what's, you know, there. What's and, happening. Uh, what's happening, yeah. Because it's been quite some time. But yeah, thank you so much for, uh, you know, sharing all that with us. Uh, while I know it's quite early and as you mentioned, the first batch that we're going through. Uh, but I was just curious to know that, uh, uh, are we looking, I mean, or uh, for example, in terms of placements or the alumni cell or the, you know, the, uh, the last part of this entire curriculum, which eventually we are also looking at in terms of how it is going to benefit us. Because as we said that, okay, we may not be the CHRO right now, but we want to make it to the CHRO. So is there any placement, uh, you know, or that positioning help which comes from the campus towards the end of the curriculum? Uh, so we are certainly not looking at uh, this program with a specific commitment on placement. So I think that is what, but we have what is known as career services, which is particularly driven by LIDA, fine, where they would help everyone to create a C-suite profile and help develop them and also put them in touch with industry, fine. But it is not a guarantee, but it is a support that would be extended as part of the career service that has been promised. Sure. Yeah, so that is what it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Deepan, back to you again. Hey, thanks, Rasmi. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, uh, I know you mentioned the uh, module-wise exams. Uh, I wanted to know more from a commitment point of view. How many exams are, I you know, how would these exams be phased out? So if, if there are, you know, 32 courses, 32 modules, should we expect 36 courses? Should we expect 36 exams? How will they be phased out? That was question one. The second question that I had was uh, in terms of the resources, let's say, uh, you know, aspects such as somebody mentioned about, uh, you know, XLRI faculty, uh, will we also be able to access the XLRI library for that matter? Uh, because that could be a rich resource of uh, info, right? So second is that. And then last but not the least, the, the batch size that you are looking at uh, in terms of, you know, pa passing out, if you could throw some light there, that will be helpful. Okay. Uh, so the first one is about exam. Fine. So if there are 36 courses, every course would have an exam. Fine. Uh, so that's one. Uh, because every course needs to be evaluated. Right. So that's one. Second is uh, resource in terms of library. Uh, yes, I think we are all uh, uh, the executive diploma students, uh, postgraduate executive diploma students. So uh, uh, whatever it takes to ensure that you have access to uh, the resources, of course, you may not have uh, exactly the same amount of access that would uh, be available to a regular student on campus, but definitely there would be access to uh, library uh, resources, e-resources, etc. Yeah, remote so access also one. works. Yes. Yeah, and uh, finally, batch size. We are looking at a batch size of about thirty-five to forty. Right. Uh, just one follow-up on on the exam part. You know, the the pacing out, as in, you know, how many exams should one expect in a month, in a quarter, or in a term? So that kind yeah. of helps plan or put in perspective in terms of the commitment and the effort required. Yeah. So what I, what we are, uh, see, we haven't finalized on that, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, sometime what we do is that uh, wait to finish some six courses and then conduct uh, a week of uh, exam. Then the disadvantage is that some of the courses which would have been over some time ago uh, with all your other commitment, et cetera, it would be difficult for you to do justice, to brush up, et cetera, et cetera. So what we are proposing is that as and when a course ends, fine, you have an exam at that point in time within maybe the next week or something of that sort. Fine. So that yeah. is uh, in the following week so that it is still fresh in the mind of the students and so they can do justice uh, to the course that is taught. I think so. Uh, 
Therefore, uh, uh, as and when a course ends, you can also expect an exam. Right, uh, Professor. Just one suggestion there: if you could just pace it out by one week, that yeah. would be helpful. Let's a module one complete, meaning? given a yeah, break yeah. of one week. Sure, sure. So you have some prep time, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that's the idea. Yes. yes. Okay. I think so professor is also you. looking at continuous learning. So. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I think Sanjeev, that's also important. Sanjeev, you have a question. Yeah. Yeah, hi. So, well, hi. Thank you so much, hi. Professor. Uh, nice thank you. you. Uh, just wanted the one uh, one suggestion I had rather. Since we all are here, and uh, if if uh, Priya or anybody can share the uh, list of participants or the you know the team members who are here, so that we can connect with each other and start building up that you know momentum from here itself. Yeah, I would leave it to lead up uh, to take it forward or whatever is appropriate there. Definitely, I think. Yeah. That's Thank you, Sanjeev. Suggestion. And yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this is, like, you know, uh, once the program starts, we will be actually sharing everybody's uh, contact data with each other because we would want this uh, entire cohort to be, you know, sort of working together. So don't worry. Uh, once the program starts in March, uh, we will be, and during your induction, we will be making a dossier and we're sending to everybody. Uh, giving the details about, uh, uh, you know, everybody's experience, the contact details, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So don't worry about that. So just, just, just bear with us for a month because we're still getting new people coming into the program. So just give us a month. And uh, one more, uh, if we can uh, put forward, if we can get the exact dates of uh, February end so that we can plan our travels, etc. Accordingly. I think it is twenty seventh. Uh... Anyway, that can also be. Yeah, we will let you know. We will, yeah, yeah, yeah. we will let you know for sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Let me Ram ask Krishna? Ramakrishna. Yeah. Yeah, um, thank you, Professor. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of questions were clarified. But the only question that I had was on the attendance part. I think early part you have mentioned, I missed it. Could you repeat what you have said? On that we attendance? said, we said, 80% uh, uh, of attendance is what we expect. Uh, if you miss a session, fine. Uh, you can certainly access the archive, etc. That facility would be there, but we would expect 80% uh, uh, in class presence. Okay, sure. So that's what it is. Thank you. Um, professor, Thank there's you. one question from uh, Pratik Katekar who is saying, Hi, yeah. Professor, can you throw some light on the international faculty that has been onboarded? Yeah, so we have uh, a few international faculty. Maybe let me just see whether my slide is. Uh, as I said, uh, not uh, everyone is. Uh, so these are some names. Can you see the slide? We have yes, Wayne Brockbank, Ronald Fry, David Krasinski, Chami Patel, Vijay Pereira, Peter Norlander, Arup Verma, and a couple of them uh, are uh, very close to finalizing. And we would we we are expecting a total of. Uh, 12 uh, international faculty. Uh, so uh, that because we are saying 36, so around one third, which would mean 12 courses would be taught by faculty from international B school. And uh, uh, so this are the list which we have uh, uh, got as of now. Uh, we have about eight people who have been uh, sort of on uh, onboarded uh, into the faculty list and uh, another four, uh, three or four would be, uh, we are expecting shortly. So that is where it is. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. So there's one question from Rajneesh. He's saying, what yeah. happens if the attendance is less than 80% due to work commitments? Yes, so we would also expect a certain commitment to the program. Uh, so, because I know it's a challenging uh, situation, but uh, we would not also want to uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, what should I say? Uh, uh, be too liberal, fine. Uh, the fact that you have decided to join this program is also a commitment that you are uh, showing, fine. So therefore, we would, of course, certain uh, unforeseen, something which is beyond our control, health issues, et cetera, uh, we need to. But uh, in terms of your work commitment and all, we would expect uh, uh, some kind of uh, preparedness, uh, uh, et cetera. So that is uh, what we are, uh, expecting. Okay, so then 
final two questions. Yes, uh, Sneha, I think that is answered already because the CXOs uh, session, when we talk about, uh, uh, you will have uh, quite a few alumni of XLRI also are part of the CXO club. So uh, quite naturally, you can expect uh, uh, Excel alumni also to be interacting with you as part of certain courses. Okay, and they're also talking about us. Uh, they have some yeah, industry body she's talking about. I know. Uh, see, for instance, uh, um, head of NASCOM today is uh, Rekha Menon. She's, she's an Excel an uh, She's an uh, alumna of Excel RI. Uh, we, I, I can't uh, commit that uh, she would definitely be there, but we will try uh, to get recommend and to address the group or something. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Time. So I, I okay. think we've got, yeah. So yeah. Professor, I think one final question and then I think then I can take the group on the mentoring thing. Yes. They've asked, Prashant Rai is asking, can someone apply for the fellow program after completing this program in XLRI? There's a fellow program that you have. Yeah, so that uh, needs a little more clarity uh, because if it is AICT equivalent, uh, it could be. The answer could be yes. Uh, so those are some of the reasons why we also wanted to explore. But I'm not uh, committing. I'm not saying that, yes, you can apply for the fellow program after this program. But uh, the, more, most likely that uh, answer could be yes. That's all what I can say now, but we will have more clarity on that. Great. Okay. Yeah. So thank you all so much. We look forward to seeing you all uh, during the, uh, the inaugural session, the orientation uh, that is uh, slated uh, in the end of uh, Feb. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, taking time and uh, joining this uh, interaction. So thank you. And I think uh, Rahul Rekshmi uh, would be spending a little more time with the uh, with the participants, right? Yes, sir. Just suggest you to stay back for five, okay, seven sure. minutes, I can, sir. I can, I can do that. Yeah. 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 Fine. So let me just um, uh, showcase the mentoring journey, sir. It would be great if you are there around. So to add sure. anything that you have. So this is the mentoring journey um, that we have, you know, very simplistically tried to uh, put it together for you all. There'll be a goal setting exercise, which will happen, uh, wherein uh, we will give you a form where you will be, you know, sort of putting in your, uh, you know, capture your goals for the next two years, um, which will also capture your interest and aspiration and what you're looking for a mentor. Um, most of you had some questions around the matching. So um, basis your interest and basis what the mentor, uh, you know, sort of uh, has, we will try and you know, sort of do our best uh, possible, ma uh, you know, matching of the, um, you know, the mentor and the mentee. Uh, if you're asking what is going to be the process, the process is that we will be actually, you know, sort of taking all the names and taking all the profiles and, you know, sort of trying to see that, you know, we do justice to everybody. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll be actually sitting together with all the profiles and we will be, you know, sort of uh, looking at, uh, you know, sort of matching them. Uh, basis, what your needs are and basis, what the uh, mentor can offer. Uh, uh, if you come back and say tomorrow that, you know, I do not like this mentor, etc. I, I don't think that, that there is an option like that. What we will be looking at is because all the mentors are all CXO leaders who have committed the time and they're all leaders in their own right. Um, so. You know, we will be, it will be a very, very tightly run process. There will be a lot of, uh, you know, check-ins and feedbacking, which will happen. So we will make sure that the, that the, that the entire journey and the entire mentor mentee relationship is very, very successful. So, so, so just believe us, uh, believe us on that. Uh, we will start the, uh, the mentoring sessions with the tripartite meeting where one of us will also be there with you and your mentor. We will share your goal setting forms and then we will, you know, sort of, um, you know, sort of get you on to, you know, sort of uh, taking your relationship forward. So your meetings, your mentoring meetings will be run by you. Uh, you will be deciding and the mentee needs to be taking all the responsibility for, you know, sort of trying to get a slot every month. We have what, what we've taken time from the CXO leaders is, um, uh, you know, a monthly session that they would possibly do with you. So uh, the, the onus of, you know, setting up those meetings lies with you. 
So that's that's what's going to happen. And as we said, they, we will all be there. Uh, there will be an entire servicing team from our side who will be uh, looking at your, uh, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, checking on you, you know, looking at if there's any feedback that you'd want to share, et cetera, et cetera. So we are there to support you on that. Uh, apart from that, uh, because there are a whole lot of, uh, you know, we have the entire CXO club, uh, we were also looking at doing mentoring events. So we were looking at like a speed mentoring event where, you know, I might be, uh, you know, wanting to know the other mentors as well. So we will be looking at doing some amount of speed mentoring session. We'll be looking about uh, doing some amount of, um, you know, hopefully when, uh, you know, this entire COVID thing is a little under control, maybe some amount of, uh, uh, you know, physical networking sessions in your city, we will try and get some, uh, you know, CXO leaders to come in and we try and do a good networking event, which will also serve like a, uh, you know, you know, uh, mentoring session uh, with the CXO leaders. Um, and we, we we close down together with, with the program journey. And uh, most of the time we do hope that, you know, by that time, we will have most of the mentors actually becoming your sponsors uh, and, you know, sort of helping you in, you know, sort of, uh, helping you towards a goal as well as, you know, sort of uh, looking at, you know, sort of opening doors for you. So that's that's the uh, that's the entire uh, mentoring journey that we're looking at. There would also be, a, a, you know, a technology LMS that we are looking at, that which you will come to know during the time of uh, your uh, induction. Uh, anything that I missed out, uh, Mayank, Rahul? I think it covers, covers the journey. Uh, I guess there's a Question in the chat box if you want to look at that. Do we get to pick a mentor? No, you do not get to pick a mentor. Just, but we really want you to, you know, sort of have the trust in us because we will be doing a lot amount of, uh, you know, sort of matching uh, bases your goals and your uh, interests. Okay, so I also wanted to showcase, uh, see a couple of mentors. So we have this 100 CXO club that we have built and a couple of names that I wanted to show you. So like uh, uh, Rahul has already spoken about, uh, you know, Dwarka Nadji. Um, you know, we have some very, very senior leaders. Dr. N.S. Rajan is also an Excel alumni. He also sits on the board of Excel uh, You know, so there are a couple of HR uh, and business leaders who are not just willing to, you know, sort of mentor, but are also willing to come and take sessions. So we would like to, you know, sort of invite them as well. So uh, most of you have also heard about, you know, these leaders like an Apurva Purohit, like a Rohit Thakur, who are very, very you know, accomplished in their own, um, uh, you know, in their own uh, field. Uh, we'll be looking at, you know, sort of getting them as well. And these are a couple of the leaders which are there. And it's a mixture of CHROs, CFOs, CMOs, you know, CEOs, like Rajesh, again, an Excel alumnus. Uh, he's a CEO for Puppeti. Uh, you have Swami Nathan, again, uh, you know, in an XLRI, uh, uh, you know, person CHRO for Fullerton. Um, and he is also very, very good with the entire aspect around uh, compensation and benefits. So, you know, we would you know, sort of try and see if we can get him. Samik Pasu is also an ex um, uh, XLR. So these are just some names. There is more to the list. There, you know, there are some names here. Rajesh Chindal has got the uh, CMO award for the year last year. So we've got people from New Age Industries, also like a Razor Pay. We also have people from like Sudha Srinivasan. She's the CEO for the Nudge Foundation. So big, big people. We've got people, uh, senior leaders from outside of India as well. So. So any questions? Professor, would you want, want to add one point on mentoring that what I've seen in my own personal journey is that with mentors, you know, these relationships many times start continuing beyond your, uh, beyond the duration of a program. So I think, you know, kind of the networks that one sets here, the kind of cohort, because it's a very, very seasoned cohort of 
business and HR professionals here. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to build that network uh, within the cohort. And secondly, with the networks, with the mentors and with your own mentor also, it can continue for a longer period of time. That's point one. Point two on career services, I want to talk about, uh, uh, Professor Prem Rajan had mentioned it. I think two things that we can look forward to. One is, how do you build your profile to get into the C-suite? You know, really having some sessions with some of the best experts from the industry uh, in terms of what is really looked at when you are applying for C-suite roles. You know, what is really, uh, you know, how does your CV stand out? Um, you know, how do you, when you apply for something internally within your organization or outside, what is really talked about? What kind of conversations really work out? You know, so really building your personal brand, that's one. And second is, I think amongst the CXOs club, there are some of them who are very, very interested to see how this batch is taking shape. So, you know, those interested CXOs, we would be sharing your profiles, of course, if you're coming through a uh, yeah, an individual nomination and not that your company has nominated you. If you're paying it yourself, then those profiles will definitely be shared with those CXOs so that, you know, uh, very clearly uh, they are wanting to uh, look at some of the HR talents and, you know, the business talents and also from a networking perspective. So, so these are the two things that the career services will offer very clearly. Uh, nobody is guaranteeing a job here because at the end of the day, senior level jobs, etc. you know, there's a lot that goes beyond. And I think it's a lot in your own hands also. But I think the platform is there in terms of a network, in terms of the right people and the interest in CXOs who are wanting to see the profiles of the batch passing out, you know, kind of we would not hesitate to share your profiles with them. And we'll also be working around your, you know, building your profile. So, you know, so that also will be a added thing. That happened towards the end of the program. So fine. So any, any questions? Okay. So then uh, I'd like to close the session then. Um, just wanted to say that, you know, we have our... Uh, program, uh, which is, uh, you know, we, in the last uh, few, uh, you know, we'll have a final uh, interview starting over the next two weeks. And, uh, but people who've already got selected, I think, uh, I think your date of last date, Chris, could you tell us what the dates are? 21st, 21st. right? 21st. Yeah, 21st of uh, uh, January. So I would really suggest that you all, please, people who have not yet paid uh, their, um, you know, enrollment amount, please to do that uh, within the next two, three days uh, and secure your seat in the program. Um, also, for people who, uh, uh, we also have an uh, announcement that if you have, we have just the last few days left. So if you have anybody who you would want to refer this program, then we have some good discounts that we can talk to you about. Um, uh, and we can use sort of, if you, if you want to, you know, sort of get selected and is enrolled in the program, then you can get a 50,000 discount. So please, if you have any reference, then please do, you know, sort of let us know uh, and the team will take it forward. Any questions? I think we could trust me for now. Thanks a lot for the organizing this session. Yes, and uh, I think we will be sending you the presentation. Uh, Professor Prem, uh, Prem Rajan, you will be giving us the presentation. Yeah, yeah. A lot of questions on that. So we will be sending you uh, an email will come to you all uh, with the entire details about the presentation. Rashmi, one quick question before we close. The, yes, the 27th yes. February orientation, is it virtual or is it, uh, is it at NCF campus? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Uh, we were hoping that we do it uh, physically, uh, but uh, we'll have to take a call with this Omicron state in the country. Uh, we will let you know soon. All right, thanks, got it. All right. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank, thank you, Professor. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.